This is Mike Paul's out of Jeepers Media on YouTube. I never thought I was going to make another Viacom versus YouTube video again because YouTube won. That's right. But Viacom says the judge made a big mistake and they're appealing that decision. But when Sumner Redstone came out of the shadows at YouTube again to try to shut us down and damage our community, I had to dust off these files and start promoting them again. And this video is to show the world just what a hypocrite Sumner Redstone is. It's very important that every single viewer out there knows one thing. People-to-people -people file sharing software is legal. Perfectly legal. It has substantial non-copyright infringing uses. Distributing that software is perfectly legal. As long as you don't promote it for copyright infringing purposes. The law comes in when you distribute that software and you promote it for copyright infringing purposes. One who distributes a device, the software, with the object of promoting its use to infringe copyright as shown by clear expression or other affirmative steps taken to foster infringement is liable for the resulting acts of infringement by third parties. Sumner Redstone, you're out there beating your drum, declaring to the world that online piracy must stop, and you're championing the copyright holder's rights because so much money is being lost from the industry. Then why on your own website did you send out over a million downloads specifically to online pirates to protect them from copyright infringing lawsuits. Why did you do it? Notice the screen cap specifically shows Lady Gaga songs to download and be protected against copyright infringing lawsuits right in the picture shown next to the editor's review. I mean really. And of course ZapShares is shown used in conjunction with LimeWire which CNET just totally is in bed with, one million copies of a program called ZapShares that is used specifically in your own editors and workers' words in their reviews, software to cover your digital tracks to prevent against copyright infringement lawsuits. How is that furthering the cause of copyright protection for the world. Those one million downloads gave people that confidence to download even more media off the internet. And that was in um, 2009 and 2010, right in the middle of your actions against YouTube? Come on, world, investigate this. And Sumner Redstone, why did you distribute software with editor reviews encouraging people to steal copyrighted material from YouTube? Our copyrighted material to the tune of over 50 million downloads. How many times was that software used to steal billions of clips from us? I personally have never minded if someone wanted to download my videos and put them on their iPhone or have them on their computer for their own personal use. I never cared. But it's not up to Sumner Redstone to decide for everyone on YouTube that people should be able to do it. It's called um, against the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. For example, video downloader 1.1.1, Cena Editor's Review. Many popular video websites obscure video links to prevent downloading. Yes, prevent copyright infringing. And what did you do? You downloaded it to those people over a million times. And also, download now, also on CNET's site. CNET's Editor's Review, this simple freeware application works pretty well, allowing you to steal YouTube videos right off the site. How many downloads? 34 million! Yet another download, Video Slurp YouTube Downloader. Download YouTube videos to your computer. Read review. Editor's four-star rating. 764,000 total downloads. And this is perfectly acceptable. Flash Video Downloader YouTube. Browse YouTube with built-in web browser and download videos. Just like Google TV, except you're encouraging people to steal the videos. 171,000 downloads. So Sumner Redstone, you distributing these software devices, promoting their use for copyright infringing purposes, stealing YouTube videos. Um, please explain why that's legal. We, we want to know. I want to know. We want answers. A person that says one thing and does another is called a hypocrite. Isn't that right, Sumner? Who could I be talking about? The CNET Corporation, which Sumner Redstone bought about the same time Google bought YouTube, actually for about the same amount of money, has a long history and a long involvement with LimeWire. If you look at this first screen capture from 2001, you can see on one of the earliest pages of LimeWire, the CNET Downloads button is embedded right in the front page 
and was there for a decade. And if Sumner Redstone was really serious about stopping massive piracy and copyright infringement in the world, he could have said to CNET, stop doing this. This is piracy. We're promoting piracy. We can't do this. Download.com is part of CNET. In the Memorandum of Law for Permanent Injunction Against LimeWire issued this summer, it was specifically mentioned that Downloads.com division of CNET distributed more than 50 million copies of the software after Sumner Redstone bought CNET. The judge found LimeWire and its founder and chairman, Mark Gordon, personally liable for infringement, saying in the ruling that an individual, including a corporate officer who has the ability to supervise infringing activity and has a financial interest in that activity or who personally participates in that activity, is personally liable for infringement. Sumner Redstone CNET promoted LimeWire right up until the day LimeWire was finally taken off the internet using copyright infringing samples look at this fair use screen cap it's from the last instructional video made just before limewire was taken offline in early 2010 the screen clearly shows copyright infringing songs there's a lot more information on dancewiththedevil.blogspot.com fair use screen cap from the actual instructional video and it looks like that cash judgment in that limewire case is going to be at least 1.5 trillion dollars a federal judge has shut down LimeWire this summer, and you can see this cozy relationship between LimeWire and CNET, where CNET provided the software on their server so people could download it virus-free, their button embedded right in LimeWire's site on the front page, ample reviews on CNET showing its use specifically to infringe copyrights. No doubt about it, they actually show real copyrighted materials and songs. And when Sumner Redstone bought CNET, nothing changed. All of this copyright infringing activity went on unabated. And you saw in that federal court document that downloads from CNET.com actually mushroomed. They actually expanded greatly now that they were under the cachet of the trusted news source CBS. I think that Sumner Redstone's on the hook for that $1.5 trillion. Do you think so? How about all you people out there? Why is he not responsible for a portion or all of that $1.5 trillion. Anyone that owns a company that allows the downloads of 50 million copies of LimeWire, like Sumner Redstone, sitting as chairman of the board over a corporation he owns, certainly not only danced with the devil, he got into bed with the devil. He made sweet love with the devil. It seems like CNET got into bed with every single file sharing software download that they could find and make a deal for their button to be on their front page. And they promoted them actively using copyright infringing material on their own site. Check these out. Look at this vintage screen cap of Scour. There's CNET downloads. Bear share during their copyright infringing day. CNET downloads. Qtrax Max during their famed copyright infringing days. Look, they even embedded a CNET review right there on their homepage with that CNET downloads button right there. Check out Kazam Media Desktop. 326 million downloads from CNET. Grokster, famous for that MGM versus Grokster ruling by the Supreme Court. There's CNET downloads right there on the homepage. Morpheus, the famous file sharing software. Download Morpheus now. You click that and took you right to CNET downloads for an astounding 100 million times. There's lots more material on my blog, dancedwiththedevil.blogspot.com. Go there and read it all. There's a big long list on the right hand side and I'm gonna be adding tons of material. CNET ran frequent file sharing tests using actual artist names, often actual song titles to test the effectiveness of getting your free music through piracy methods. This one actually shows LimeWire. CNET ran regular tests testing the effectiveness of the piracy software like Nutella, LimeWire, Bear, Share, Nucleus. They tested Britney Spears, The Strokes, Mogwai, Beatles, Run DMC, Stravinsky, Leonard Bernstein, Randy Newman, Megadeth, Metallica, Pixies, Radiohead, American Analog Set, Miles Davis, Johnny Cash. And they also tested against Audio Galaxy, Music City, Morpheus, Win MX, and Kazaa. All those same artists. Then when you read the reviews and see which one is the ultimate piracy software, you can click the link right on the same page and go to CNET's own download page and download either a free version or a paid version. Yes, they sold paid versions of a lot of these software file sharing systems. Look at all the money they were making. 
when the federal judges were passing rulings like shutting down Napster, they offered solutions to their readers with live links to downloading the software on their own site with tutorials how to use that software to circumvent federal judges' orders. Here's an example. Lots more on my blog, Danced with the Devil. If Napster gets shut down, is there any way to use the Napster software to share files? Yes, there's a program called Navigator with a live link right to that on their site. And if you look below, a beginner's guide to using Navigator to facilitate your needs during these dark times. In MGM vs. Grokster, the Supreme Court found that sending a newsletter with links to news articles that mentioned infringing uses might be an affirmative act for inducement purposes. <gasps> CNET did exactly that. Here's their ad for their newsletters, and here's one of their actual newsletters. No kidding. And what does it have? A direct link to their tests showing actual songs being downloaded to find the best alternatives. Since the popularity of my blog and this impending video, CNET has been ripping down all of those links. When you go to my blog, a lot of the links don't work anymore. They took down Zap Shares. Why? Weren't you proud of that offering and proud of your editor's re review of it? Why did you remove so much of your file sharing software? Was it because of my video and blog? Hmm? Were you caught with your hand in the cookie jar? Did you know you did bad thing? Bad, bad. This Cena article is particularly interesting regarding Metallica, who was actually trying to sue their fans. They said, why are they doing that? They're living in castles and bathing in champagne. There's something wrong. Hundreds more examples proving my point on my blog, dancedwiththedevil.blogspot.com. If they file a bogus takedown notice against fair use news reporting, it's mirrored everywhere. I will give links either on Twitter or something so people can find all this information. I've already shared it with so many music companies. For some reason, it's mostly people overseas that are interested. Here's Dave, top nine ways for file sharing music lovers to break the law, specifically saying that. Look, those are live links going right to the download spot to grab your software to do it. Napster, limited to sharing MP3. Sure, Napster still boasts by far the largest library, excuse me, community of files, which makes it your best bet for breaking copyright laws big time. I've actually been speaking with reporters from the national news media for the past couple days. My blog has gotten a lot of attention all of a sudden because Viacom has decided to continue this action against YouTube in appeal which they're confident they're going to win. And the reporters are saying, you're making a lot of points that are actually kind of valid. And I actually asked one of the reporters, why do you think the government hasn't shut them down? This has been going on for years. Why haven't they shut them down yet? And the reporter said to me, Sumner Redstone is untouchable. No prosecutor will touch him. Oh my God, I was so shocked. I mean, how can anyone be that untouchable? Why, how untouchable is he? The reporter said to me, Sumner Redstone could kill a hooker every single day in Times Square in broad daylight in front of a million people he could go to every meeting the rest of the day bathed in their blood and there wasn't a prosecutor in the United States that would touch him. Then I asked that reporter, what if I asked my fans to contact the representatives in the United States and their congressmen in the United States and forward links to that blog in this video and say that they're concerned about what Sumner Redstone is doing to YouTube, comparing it to what he's doing to the entire rest of the world, um, fostering copyright infringement. And the reporter said, Pfft. It's not going to do anything because that representative or that congressman is going to get that message. They're going to call Sumner Redstone on the phone and say, Sumner, we, we're getting these messages. Is this true? And he's going to respond, oh, it's perfectly legal. They won't even question it. They'll hang up the phone and they'll say, perfectly legal. Like that. Oh, my gosh. Perfectly illegal is more like it. And one of the reporters I spoke to suggested a very scary thing for you. They said maybe CNET Downloads is actually gathering information about people who are actually downloading the software. I mean, if you bought a paid version, they have all your financial information already and your name, address, etc. And maybe they're saving your IP addresses. Maybe they're actually planning to pass this along to somebody. Maybe the industry is putting them up to this. Did you ever think about that? Uh, I, I don't know. Do you think that's possible? I mean, I'm sure they preserved it. Sumner Redstone, did you preserve all that information? Is there any chance that you might be trying to pass that along to anybody, ever? Why don't you give people peace of mind and say that you destroyed all that information and you promised never to pass it to anyone? Why don't you share that with us because I bet a lot of people here downloaded stuff from CNET and they might be a little scared. Maybe they should be scared. 
Don't worry, I'm making plenty of toy reviews. My next video is going to be a toy review, but the one after that is going to be the secret Beidou China Viacom connection. Wait till Google YouTube hears this information. And I wish to express my deepest heartfelt devotion and love eternally to whoever talked Sumner Redstone into buying this albatross, which potentially could have saddled him with a $1.5 trillion judgment, if not substantially more. Thank you. It was like a gift from baby Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. Great, Scott, I'm doing everything I can. I even went back in time and got back some of Redstone's copy of Grey Sports Almanac, but it wasn't enough. You need to do your part too, each and every one of you around the world. And how can you do your part? If you're not in the United States, send a link to the blog, dancewiththedevil.blogspot.com, and this video to your country's representative, whether you be in Germany, France, Switzerland, Sweden, Australia, New Zealand, um, Japan, China, anywhere in the world. Let your legislators know what's going on here that's just been going on unabated because all those copies of LimeWire and all that people of people file sharing software that's been served up from United States servers has been used to steal your content too. Your local artists, your local television programming. It's costing your country billions of dollars because of what one United States corporation is doing. And I have a special request for all my fans watching this. Do not bother CBS or CNET on YouTube. Please don't bother them. I imagine that most of the people there have no idea that this even happened. All right? Do not bother them on YouTube. Unless, of course, they file a false takedown notice against me. But, but don't bother them. Leave them alone. They're part of our community. Don't touch them. Don't forget to stop by my Facebook fan page, facebook.com slash Mike Mozart. There are going to be lots of short exclusive videos about this Sumner Redstone situation posted there with lots of information I haven't disclosed to anybody yet. Plus, there's lots of cool toy reviews you probably haven't seen that are Facebook exclusive. So go there and check those out anyway. So guys out there, have you heard about this kid that was dragged into federal court that's in there right now? They're trying to put him in prison for modding two Xboxes so that they might play pirated games. That's all he did. I'm not kidding, right? And our federal tax dollars are at work right now with federal prosecutors to put him in prison. Let's see if they do anything about Sumner Redstone. Let's see if they do anything about this huge ongoing criminal conspiracy of copyright infringement globally, right? Are those reporters right? Do you think that they're not gonna do a damn thing? Because I think that something should be done. What about you? Do you think something should be done? I mean, really, right? And get the word out. Don't forget to subscribe because I have more videos. I have one coming up showing this secret Viacom Beidou China connection and how it affected YouTube and Google. Ooh, wait till you hear that one. I also have a great video coming out. Um, it's a compilation video of the top 100 worst Viacom products ever made. Oh, plus a great Door the Explorer one involving a child. I'm gonna encourage people not to buy Door the Explorer toys again. So do me a favor, subscribe, send me a friend request, share this on Facebook, share it on Twitter, the buttons are right down there. Make sure you spread the word about this, tell the world. Comment down here and comment often. Don't put spam, no, don't, don't copy and paste because it'll be picked up here as the system is spam. I want you to put true messages, your real thoughts, comment often so that the word gets out about what's really going on with this guy that's trying to shut down YouTube and take away our YouTube. And he turns out to be such a massive copyright infringer and YouTube never did a damn thing wrong, right? And don't forget to rate this so everyone sees this. I'm putting it in the news category. I'm not putting any advertising on this. I'm blocking all advertising from this video. Upload this video, mirror it onto your own channel. Go ahead. And if Viacom or Sumner Redstone does anything, like files DMCA or whatever that bull crap is, if they try to do this, this is all fair use. This is a news report, and so is that blog. And they're gonna have to contend with an awful lot of angry people here on YouTube because it's definitely gonna be bogus. This is all fair use, and they know it. Absolutely know it. No doubt about it. So make sure you mirror this. Let's spread the word. Don't forget, Contact your legislators in the United States or overseas. Share this on Facebook. Tweet this. Comment often. Rate it so the world sees it. And let's just tell Sumner Redstone to leave our YouTube alone once and for all because I'm going to keep making these reports until he stops. And I think that next one is going to be a lot more revealing to the entire global community than this one ever thought of being. I mean, really. Don't forget that we are the you in YouTube.
our YouTube. And don't let anyone take that away from us. Thanks again. And we'll get toys next time. <laughs>